Hello everybody, it's day 26 of our astronomy unit. I'm Andy Pils, and in today's video, I'll be going over some of the activities that we have for this lesson, which include looking at the hersprung russell diagram, which shows the characteristics of stars and how our sun is going to change over time. Uh, and then the independent work, which is your proposal for how humans will continue uh, their civilization as the sun goes through those stages that we're predicting will happen uh, later on in its life or in its life cycle. So just to review from last week, remember that we had this star in the box activity and it shows what's going to happen to our sun um, over the next billions of years. Um, so if we watch this simulation right now, of course, our sun is sun sized, um, but later on in its life. So we're talking about 10, thousand million years into its life we're going to start to see the diameter of the sun increase uh, to a very very big size so it's going to turn into a red giant its temperature is going to its surface temperature does cool off a little bit but that's still going to create a number of problems for life on earth so in this activity um, you are going to do a little bit of research to see what our way of surviving this catastrophe would be. So they say that the sun's size is going to increase to about the orbit of the Earth. So it's going to grow to the size it's actually going to swallow up Mercury and Venus, and it very well may swallow up the Earth too. If not, the diameter of the sun is going to be so large that there's going to be an incredible amount of heat being uh, put onto the Earth's surface, and Pretty much life as we know it is not going to be able to exist. Uh, animals and organisms are not going to be able to survive. <coughs> and it will get to the point, and it will get to the point eventually that water will just evaporate and uh, we won't even have much of an atmosphere anymore. So we're going to have to move out of what now is called the Goldilocks zone. So it's not too hot or not too cold on Earth. And we're going to have to move away from the center of the solar system. Um, even though in the diagram we see that the temperature of red giants or the surface temperature of red giants is a little bit less think about the size of the sun that's actually going to be the more influential factor if you consider like holding up a lighter versus a campfire even though a campfire might not necessarily have the temperature that a small lighter would have since it's so much bigger it's going to be generating that much more heat to the surrounding areas so if you watch this video the narrator of the video kind of talks about a lot of the problems that we're going to predict are going to occur. And then he says, well, here's a potential solution. So what I did is I made a little bit of a graphic organizer to help kind of like put some thoughts down before you write your proposal or uh, put it in whatever way that your teacher wants. If they want just like a written proposal or a presentation with some pictures, whatever it may be, I think it's a good idea to record some ideas in this graphic organizer. So the first table are potential challenges that would come with the expansion of the sun into a red giant, as well as some potential solutions. So in the YouTube video, uh, one potential challenge that we saw was as the sun grows larger in diameter, diameter, um, it will be too hot for life to be sustained on Earth's surface. Um, so maybe one solution might be to not live on the surface and go underground. But I believe in the video he said to go to uh, one of the moons of Saturn. Um, so we might have to move our civil... Uh, so, sorry, I can't type and speak at the same time to a further out in the system. Um, and the more specific you can be in your responses, the better. So as you watch videos, I think it would be a good idea to just kind of like pause and write some things in. So other things to consider besides the temperature, um, how will we create an atmosphere so that we can breathe? How will we create food um, so that we can eat? and we can kind of sustain all of our regular life functions as well. 
Um, so not all of your answers might necessarily be answered in the videos that you watch. So we're hoping that you'll do a little bit of exploration and searching on your own. Um, so that's where table two may come into play. Uh, so what research is happening right now and what technologies are we developing um, that can benefit future humankind in colonizing and expanding into the solar system. Um, so a couple things that you might want to consider or might want to look into. Um, one place I would recommend is checking out NASA's website and the work that they're doing right now with the 2020 Perseverance rover that they just landed. If you actually check out the mission page, you'll see that one of the four main missions of the Perseverance, um, one is to look for signs of habitability, so can we actually live here? And the fourth mission is preparing uh, the surface for humans, eventually for humans to colonize Mars. So if you're trying to think of research and technologies that we're currently working on that could potentially help us later on, maybe colonize a celestial object further out. Um, a good place to start looking would be to actually look at the space mission that we're actually doing right now on another planet. Um, some of the things that they're doing is finding ways to create oxygen, uh, finding ways to create a habitat in which humans can live, not necessarily just in a spacesuit. Um, so a lot of cool, interesting things that you can kind of search and find and you can plug into this graphic organizer just to organize your thoughts and help you out. There's a lot of good information on NASA's website. You can pretty much use any government funded website. So any source that ends in like .gov would be good, .edu are always good sources. You can also uh, just do like a regular Google search and search for uh, trusted, reliable resources, things like scientific journals, things like National Geographic, um, would all be considered um, good, reliable resources for finding information for this thought exercise. So we're not necessarily hoping for every single thing to be correct. We're looking to see your thinking, to see your way of like applying these things or these concepts that people are working on right now. Um, and also just kind of be a little bit creative and explore some of the science that's currently happening and some of the things that people are actually working on that could benefit uh, generations and generations of humans to come. The last part of today's work, um, it comes from the January 2019 Regents. So we have this reading on water on Mars. Actually, the Perseverance rover um, is checking out the, what's the name of the crater? begins with a J, the Gennaro crater, I believe. Um, and one of the reasons that they picked this site for landing and for, here it is, the Jezero crater. Uh, one of the reasons that they picked this crater is because they can actually see the remnants of a delta, a river delta, leading into this crater, which means there could have potentially have been a river there that created that dried out delta. And if there was water and if there was a river delta, there could have been life there. Um, so our region's question actually has to do with uh, water on Mars. So you'll read this little passage and learn um, some of the things that we're observing that make us think that there was water on Mars. Uh, one event that could have formed Martian craters. So what are some of the things that created craters? Not so we have some craters on Earth, um, but we do have an atmosphere that prevents a lot of these things from making craters. If you think of our moon that doesn't have an atmosphere, that has significantly more craters. So that could um, give you a hint as to what created those Martian craters. The number of days from the first day of summer on Mars to the next first day of summer. Well, on Earth, the a number of days from the first day of summer for us and the next first day of summer would be one year, one Earth year. So to find the number of days from the first Martian summer to the next Martian summer, you would just need to open up your ESRT to the solar system data table on page 15 and find out the length of a year on Mars. And lastly, it has to do with terrestrial or Jovian planets. We talked about this a uh, number of lessons back, but remember our first four planets are going to be the terrestrial planets. Boom, 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 and boom. Uh, and characteristics of them, 
they're going to have higher densities because they have rockier surface, they have smaller equatorial diameters, and they are closer to the sun. Our gas giants or our Jovian planets are going to be the next four planets out. Things that are characteristic of them would be lower densities because they have um, gassy surfaces, they have larger equatorial diameters, and they are further away from the sun. So a uh, little bit of new stuff, a little bit of creative stuff, and a little bit of oldies but goodies, but I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you folks next time. Have a nice day.